I'm going to get the opportunity to share a little bit with you guys today. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to encourage us and how you're going to use us, Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like you to turn to uh, John, if you'd like to, uh, book of John, chapter 11. Uh, my wife is going to read some stuff, and then I'll talk about it after she gets to read. All of it? Not the uh, 14. Okay. John 11, 1 through 6, and then 11 through 14, and then 17 to 44 in the NIV. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So he, then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher's here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who'd come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? She at, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad order, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. So here we have a story where Jesus is going to perform a miracle. But one of the 
things here that we can really see is the fact that God is operating Jesus Christ out of his love. And he has a real loving relationship with these people. But even with that, he hesitates because he has a greater purpose in doing something to help these people. And he allows himself to wait until that time. I would like to look at the verse 5 where it talked about, uh, I'm sorry, a verse that it, <coughs> I lost myself here, where it talks about God really loving Lazarus and loving them. And sometimes we know that God loves us, and out of that, we expect God to do certain things. And that's not wrong or bad. That we have this vision that we know that God loves us and we pray and we want God to intervene on something. And then when he doesn't intervene the way we think he should or the time that we think he should, then we find ourselves at a road where we have to decide are we still going to accept that God loves us and that God's interest is in our best? That can be difficult at times, especially when what, however perception or what you feel God told you on how this was going to work out. And yet in the middle where it hasn't worked out yet, will you still allow his love to embrace you to help you get through the waiting times, to help you get through what you have not seen yet, and even deal with the emotional response that you're having right now in the middle of the situation, especially if it's a loved one who's sick, or things where you know the people are still suffering or having great difficulties, or even yourself, because you're still feeling sick or you're still having things, and you know that God loves you. And there is a place where the Holy Spirit wants you to begin to allow that view of his love to begin to help you and to see God in a different perspective that he's there with you and he's helping you get through this situation even though he's not necessarily answering or making a move in the way that you want and maybe he wants. That that has to hold you and embrace you and fulfill you while you go through this difficult time that hasn't came yet. And it is a challenge to you as a believer, even more so for those who don't really believe in God. Yet when crises and difficulties come, they want to pray or ask someone that's a believer to pray. And as though they really want to see an instant change and they're hoping and wanting to believe for an instant change, but the instant change doesn't come. And then usually if, when you are at that road, you have two responses that you are going to proceed in, whether you realize it or not, either you're going to allow the love of God and the hope that you have to take you to the next level, or you're going to decide that it gives you more evidence to not to believe or not to hold in. And you really have to decide which way you want to go, because it's up to you now to go ahead and latch on to what God wants to do in you. He is there to help you. But if you decide based on the results that you wanted, and they haven't happened yet, so you decide that God has disappointed me, then you decide that you don't want to love anymore God, or you don't want to trust any God anymore, or you don't want to be around believers that do trust, because that irritates you, because you didn't see the answer you want. Then you see how you're at this uh, road where you are making a decision whether you want to or not, but you're at this road where you have to. 
And God is desiring when we come to these roles that you get to see him in a level that you otherwise probably wouldn't see him. And it's designed through the Holy Spirit to take you beyond your own strength, to take you beyond your own understanding, and that you find in residence a peace. Not that you're peaceful with the decision that you don't see, but you're in peace with knowing God still loves you. God has a purpose even though you don't understand it. And I'm not saying that God caused it. It is though God can intervene, but for whatever reason he hasn't yet, still know that God loves you and his purpose that when it's all said and done, you'll draw closer to him and you will know he is all of that, that he is able even in things that don't make any sense. Even though when it's a tragedy that you didn't think you could get through, all of a sudden the nature and love of God takes you beyond that and then you now become to know God in a greater way. And sometimes to know God, we say, all I want is God's will. All I want is to get close to God. Sometimes the difficult of life causes us to be in places where it will cost you a change in your life. It will cost you to stretch your faith and allow nothing else but the answer of God's love to get you through. And and believing in that, that God will. And there's no answer. All it is is you resting in the reality that God loves you. And it's the same as a child who has fell down, hurt his knees, got pain, and it comes to the mom, and mom holds it and say it'll be okay. Well, the child knows right now it hurts, but knowing that the parent there is showing love gets her to forget about the pain and embrace the reality how much mom loves me, how much mom is trying to do things beyond her own ability to show me she loves me, to encourage me, to caress me. That is exactly what God is doing in situations that come in that reality. Also, I like to look at verse uh, 23, where it talked about Martha, who does believe in God, who does understand that there is going to be a, re a resurrection of the dead, that the dead will come back to life. And she kind of believes that. But when Jesus is talking, she doesn't quite get that. And she expects something to already happen because in her mind, if God loves me like he says, and I know he's a healer, I know that he can bring people from the dead, I would assumption that he would not allow us to go through this and he'd already came before and stopped it and gave my brother health. But in this situation, God doesn't do that. He allows and waits to make sure that Lazarus is dead. And you're thinking, how can that be? Well, God is wanting to e show you the experience of a real natural uh, way that us as human beings can relate to that God is just not saying in words that he is above death. He is actually going to help you experience that reality and raising this man who's been dead three to four days. And he's going to do that, allowing you to know him deeper and in a greater way. I'm not saying that God necessarily has to do it that way, but he's chosen in this specific situation to do it that way. And as a believer, each one of these people who do understand that God loves them sees it and realize how much God really does love and how much motivated out of love that God set the order because of disobedience of man that death would have a purpose and death could bring an end to life because of what Adam and Eve done. That's a law now. If that doesn't happen, then God lied when he said, if you would take of this fruit, you will surely die. And man now has to deal with death. But yet God comes in a supernatural way and defies the very nature of this reality. The person was sick and things didn't get better and they died. Yet God comes in and shows them that I'm not only saying this, I am the truth and the light of resurrection, and they actually see it happen. And 
it helps them see God in a greater and a more personal way that they have never been able to otherwise. Our life right now is full of situations that we are not understanding and, and we don't really, I don't know if you can understand, but all around us seems like there's a season in this country right now where death seems to knock on doors without any mercy, without any real valid reason if there is one, but just things that don't make any sense at all. There's no way that you can look at the situation and say, well, this kind of makes sense. It truly doesn't. Yet in this, God wants to still come in these situations, especially if you're a believer, and encourage you and help you through this process. And you know, again, I'm not saying God wanted these people to die, but being that they did die, God wants to come in with his love and help you process it in a way that draws you closer to him and helps you turn something that's bad into something that will produce good behavior and great things out of you now that you understand how much God loves you and how he's helped you to this situation. That now you want to go produce something greater and love that will take away some of the bad things that are happening all around us so we can produce doing great things good things to not let the overwhelming of all these ugly things overwhelm us and make us lose hope when we realize and we're being motivated by the love of God to produce good and great things to people that we're surrounded by and holding and compassion, doing for the poor, doing for the sick, doing things that make a difference and reflect the love of God that's in you and that helps you manifest this to people who may feel discouraged and burdened because they're going through things and I believe that we can do this and I believe God wants us to do this also want my wife to read one more verse uh, chapter in John 15 uh, chapter 15 15 to 21 in the NIV I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business Instead, I've called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will lo would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you? A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. Now, here we're, Jesus is making these statements that also talks about the Holy Spirit and how he's allowing that to come into you literally and allow it to grow in you and to help you deal with some of the things that you're going to face. And God also... Jesus is sitting up at the right hand of the Father, literally making intercessory for us as we go through things here on earth. So it is God's love and grace that is trying to help you deal with a world that's fallen, a world that has all kind of confusing and complicated things. And it seems the more we move into time, the bigger and the crazier these things get. All the more reason that we as believers need to realize that through the trusting of God and through the Holy Spirit that's in us and on us, we are being positioned to be hope and to be encouragement around all these things that we see that are just crazy and just not working right. And in the poverty and all the things that we're facing in this world today, that God is still wanting us 
to allow heaven to come through us to be able to make a difference in our environments, a real difference that people can grab a hold of and come into relationship knowing God and begin to experience what you're experiencing. And we know that God says there's going to come a time when he is going to deal with all the darkness in the world and there's going to come a time that uh, time will be no more. But in the meanwhile, we have to deal with the ugly things that we're seeing all over again and all over the places. And unfortunately, it's affecting children and it's affecting older people. So there's no uh, bias in who it affects. It is affecting all of us. And sometimes the enemy allows people to have crazy confusion and full of hate and things that just makes no sense. But yet we have the ability as believers and those who have faith in God to still be able to love and embrace and make it so around us there is a peace and there is a love that we're trying to accomplish. Not that we have all the understanding, but we have a peace within us through the Holy Spirit and the promises of God to bring forth life and hope where there's just uh, bad things and confusion. And I believe that now in this time, greater we as believers that we should be conscious and aware of our environments so we can be a minister to people. Sometimes all that means is just being able to hold somebody, being able to say something that maybe be encouraging at the time they're going through some difficult things, especially people who are sick or have physical issues that are really a daily issue, that we can embrace them with real love and compassion and be able to at least make them feel that you care and if there was something you could do you want to try to do it to show the love of God and to show that you love them. And I just really appreciate that God is allowing us to be a witness and to be some comfort to the world as we see some of these difficult things that we're facing in our world today. Uh, I got through this quicker than I wanted, but <laughs> I... Uh, Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities to share and the opportunities to express your love and your greatness. In Jesus' name, amen.